This Bermuda Cave segment for Discovery Channel Canada has been brought to you by Butterfield, Bermuda Department of Tourism and Crystal Caves of Bermuda. It's a seductive underwater world with exquisite formations. At first glance, this underwater cave ecosystem seems lifeless. But look carefully, you'll spot tiny critters. Cave biologist Dr. Tom Iliff has been studying Bermuda's caves for nearly 20 years. We've found uh, more than 80 species of cave adapted animals in Bermuda that are unique to the caves. There are probably more cave species in Bermuda per unit area of any cave system that we know of in the world. And that's really amazing because Bermuda is kind of out there all alone in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. How do these animals get to Bermuda and how have they survived? They are questions Dr. Iliff is gearing up to answer. He's diving into Bermuda's longest cave network. Hidden beneath the steep cliff and murky waters is the entrance to the Green Bay Caves in Castle Harbor. They're more than 2,000 meters long. Extending out all the way under the cliff is this uh, enormous cavern room. It gets much larger and bigger. The ceiling height is probably 20 or 25 feet, and it's uh, 50 or 75 feet wide, so quite a, a large uh, expanse. Only a handful of cave divers in the world have dared to venture into these caves. The descent is steep. The turns dark and unpredictable. One wrong move could spell disaster. Dr. Iliff and his team think it's worth the risk because here they are finding life like no other. Like this tiny shrimp which is adapted to these dark caves. It's transparent, has long sensors and no eyes. They tend to be smaller in size. They tend to produce larger but fewer eggs, so the young are produced at a more advanced state in development and more likely to survive in the in-cave environment. Unique sponges have also settled in here. Researchers are studying their medicinal value. Sponges have compounds in them that have been found to have antimicrobial or anti-cancer activity. Every dive and turn is a discovery. Occasionally, Dr. Iliff runs into shoals of fish that desperately try to defend their turf. Sometimes he finds surprise visitors like the starfish that perhaps wandered into the caves from the ocean. In the past, he has also found the remains of creatures that used to live here, like these bones that led to the rediscovery of a native seabird that was thought to be extinct. The bones in the cave uh, tell us a lot about uh, what life was like on the surface of Bermuda uh, before there were humans on this island. So we can potentially find new species that lived in Bermuda but are now extinct. It's not only creatures, but also these immaculate formations that tell tales. Stalactites and stalagmites are only formed by dripping water in air, so their presence indicates that all of the known extent of Bermuda's caves were completely dry when sea level was lower during glacial periods in the ice ages. Further studies of these formations reveal that Bermuda's sea level was 400 feet lower than it is today. And by studying what the past history of sea level has been, we can better understand the rate of change that sea level can uh, attain, how fast sea level can go up and down, and how quickly environmental change can be reflected in changes in sea level. Researchers believe there's a treasure trove of information still to be found here. These caves will be protected from the public until the mysteries are uncovered. Meantime, Dr. Iliff's quest to find life will lure him back into these dark, dangerous caves that only few can venture.
This Bermuda Cave segment for Discovery Channel Canada has been brought to you by Butterfield, Bermuda Department of Tourism and Crystal Caves of Bermuda.